Hi there everyone, today I'm going to be dissecting uh, two members of Oryctes nasicornis, that is the European rhino beetle. These are beetles from Dynastinae, uh, which is itself a part of Coleoptera, Coleoptera being the overarching term for all beetles. There are about 400,000 species of beetle, which equates to 40% of all insects and about 25% of all animal species. Dynastinae contains the biggest and heaviest of the beetles. These guys are about 2 inches long. Uh, the biggest in Dynastinae being things like Megasoma, the Hercules beetle. Uh, all Dynastinae beetles have big, thick exoskeletons for defence. They are true insects, having six legs and two pairs of wings. In beetles, uh, one pair of wings is the flight wings, which you can see here. The other pair of wings is hardened into elytra, which is a protective covering so the delicate flight surfaces don't get damaged. There's uh, one pair of elytra from one of these beetles. That is the outer surface, this is the inner surface. They uh, fit together down there. You can see the wing attachments here. These beetles will spend uh, between two and four years as grubs or larvae and only a few months as adults. As adults, they actually lose their ability to eat. Their digestive tract is lost in the metamorphosis from grub to adult. Uh, so they have to acquire all the nutrients they'll need for their entire life as grubs. They do nothing but search for mates and breed as adults. As a larvae, it will eat mostly rotting wood and leaf pulp. These aren't native to the UK, but they are to almost all of Europe and the Palearctic zone. These two individuals are two adult males. They have been dead for a few months. Uh, as I said, these beetles are fairly short-lived in adulthood. Uh, these I had for three, four months, three to four months as adults. Uh, and these have been dead for a fair while now, so they have desiccated. Uh, if you look at the interior of this one, you can see it is actually almost hollow now and has dried very well. Okay, the first thing we're going to examine here is the body of one of these. Uh, so this has had the legs, the both pairs of wings, and the head removed. You can see that it has this segmented feature. That's common to a lot of insects and, in fact, most uh, animal creatures. These are controlled by things called Hox genes. Uh, the Hox genes are a sort of architectural plan for a body. Uh, so there'll be genes that say, this segment needs to be th of this kind, this segment needs to be of a slightly different kind, and this of a completely different kind. Hox genes are particularly useful when examining things like uh, Drosophila melanogaster, which is a very common uh, lab animal, which uh, is a fruit fly. Uh, there's been a lot of experiments done in recent years uh, over swapping around Hox genes in Drosophila uh, and making them do things like grow legs out of their faces or eyes out of their midsection. If we look here at the side of this animal now, we can actually see these small holes on the side. These are called the spiracles. Uh, insects have what's called a tracheal breathing system. Uh, so these holes lead into lots of small passageways which uh, branch and diverge out, much like uh, bronchi and bronchioles in humans. Uh, in insects, however, there is no closed circulatory system. They have an open circulatory system, so they'll have uh, small hearts or heart-like structures on the top here, uh, on the inside. Uh, which pump uh, the internal fluid called hemolymph around the body. Uh, this is pumped around all of these small uh, trachea and tracheoles, uh, which allows oxygen to diffuse into the hemolymph and spread around the insect's body. These beetles can also uh, use the spiracles. They can squeeze air out of them very fast uh, by contracting their body. This makes a sort of squeaking or hissing sound, uh, which can be used to signal between beetles or to intimidate predators or warn off uh, things that would be about to step on them or things like that. Okay, so let's take a look at the ventral view of this beetle's head. This is the head of one of the beetles. Uh, you can see in here, these are the compound eyes. Uh, these are bigger than I would expect in a beetle of with a lifestyle like this one. Uh, as they live mostly in leaf litter and soil, I wouldn't expect them to need to rely overly much on sight, uh, which is interesting more than anything else. Uh, you can see the front legs are on here, either side. Uh, these are missing the tarsus, which is the distal portion. Uh, so proximal and distal. Proximal means closer to the centre, distal means further away from the centre. 
Um, these uh, structures here are called the tibial teeth. They uh, allow the leg to grip better, to dig better. As I said, these beetles live in soil and uh, leaf litter, um, so being able to dig is quite an advantage. Uh, you can also just about see the uh, antennae, which are here. This is the head of the other beetle, so you can see now this is the dorsal side and this is the ventral side we were looking at a second ago. You can see a lovely view of the beetle's tibial teeth here. Uh, you can also see uh, the uh, horn here, which is used uh, by males for fighting. Beetles like this are sexually dimorphic, which means that the males look different from the females. These males have a horn, the females don't. If you see this ridged area here, this is called the pronotum. Uh, in this specific species, Erictes nasicornis, uh, it is flat, however some other species of rhino beetles, so other ones in Dynastinae, uh, will have what's called a pronotal horn, so a secondary horn which uh, will spread out of that here. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the ventral view of uh, the second beetle. Um, you can see the eyes here are actually even more pronounced than in the first one. Uh, also the antennae are much clearer here, so you can see these structures here are the antennae. This also gives you a lovely view of the, the forelimb here. Uh, this actually has the tarsus here, which is the distal segment. Uh, you can see the joints in this here. Beetles are arthropods, which are joint things with jointed legs. Uh, this includes all spiders, crustaceans, and insects. Here we can see uh, two slightly different limbs. So these are from the same beetle. Uh, this will be a more forward limb, uh, probably the second pair. This will be from the third pair. You can see uh, that these... Uh, slightly more raised, whereas these are flatter. That's because the beetle is more squat down towards its back end. These also have the claws here, and the tarsus is very well preserved. Uh, you can see that the hairs and the spikes here are used for climbing and grip. Looking at the body here, you can see these are where the wing attachments are. So as I said, there are two pairs of wings. Uh, the elytra attach here, and the flight wings attach here. This part is known as the scutellum. And this is the pagidium. Uh, the pagidium means rear part. For anyone who's interested in words out there, calipigian means having a big bum. This is one of the flight wings, so it's one of the pair. Uh, you can see that compared to the beetle, uh, this has a pretty decent surface area. The surface area of the wings is about twice that of the surface area of the beetle uh, in one plane. However, because of the mass of the beetle and how big and heavy it is, they're actually quite clumsy flyers. So these are the elytra, these are the pair of protective coverings, the armour, the exoskeleton of the beetle. Uh, these go over the main set of flight wings uh, to offer protection. You can see these uh, nodules here, this is where they connect to the main body of the beetle. Uh, so this is now the ventral side of one of these beetles. You can see here, this is the, the space where the forelimbs were attached. Uh, this is the segmentation down the body and this is the pagidium. Uh, where this hind leg is attached, you can see this is much flatter. As I said, the beetle is squatter down to the ground at the back. Uh, and you can see the spikes and the tarsus coming along here with the claws. Uh, because this leg is still actually attached, I can show you the movement in this joint. So you can see with this, this is the back section uh, of the insect. Uh, this is where it has desiccated, so it's been left in a very dry environment for a couple of months now. Uh, you can see the interior. This would all have been full of hemolymph, this uh, fluid that is analogous to uh, mammalian blood. This hard exoskeleton, this sort of chitinous exoskeleton, uh, is all that remains after the rest of the beetle has rotted away. Okay. Uh, you can also see here, this is where the wings would have rested while the beetle was alive. Uh, and down here, and if I turn this around, here... You can see an excellent view of the spiracles, the breathing holes that lead into the tracheal system. So this is the midsection, the beetle's thorax. This one still has the wings attached. Uh, what I'm going to try and do is fold these out to give you an idea of how they connect to the beetle's body. So you can see that as this has dried, the wings have cracked somewhat. Uh, but you can get an idea of how this wing unfolds in these two stages, so this needs to fold out here. You can be very careful with it because it's very delicate. And yeah, this wing has just come completely off. 
So what I can do is try to pull this section outwards and the wing unfolds like that.